Thank you. <laughs> Quite sure. My source is saying, with actually. Cleveland and it is time for The Rant with Barbara Rose Brooker. And if you aren't familiar with Barbara, well, I'm just going to tell you that I want you just to go to one special website. It's called agemarch.org. And the reason I want you to go there is because it makes no difference how old you are. You have a voice. And Barbara, today we're going to be talking about that voice that we have, especially in this election year. Yes. So tell us a little bit about your guest, who we believe is going to shed some really nice light on this subject. Well, listeners, we have the fabulous Peter Slayton on for the second time today for those listeners who had watched before. And I'm just going to rant for a minute about Peter because I could do a whole show on the work he is doing and has done. And in honor of our great Ruth Bader Ginsburg, my heroine and everyone's heroine, I, I'd like to say that Peter Slayton is in that category. And I really believe it, Peter, with the work that you're doing and have done. And let me just start off by saying Peter is a, a world known advocate for disability rights. And I say disability justice at every age, every race, every, every gender, every sexuality, he is changing the world and trying to change the world because we do live in a world, I think today, particularly today, where there isn't uh, justice. There's justice for some, but there is not justice for most. And I would say even most people have some disability. And Peter is the CEO, and Peter, do correct me if I'm wrong, because I sat on my glasses, so I'm not reading anything. <laughs> and they're done that. <laughs> right, it's, you know, I may have to put, but I don't want to miss anything. Peter is CEO and founder of Slayton Groups. And part of this is he, he trains, he has people who train staff for hotels, not only, not only in the architecture and design, but the comforts for people who have disabilities and all kinds of disabilities. Well, it's about, Barbara, it's about the service, really, um, because you can have all the great design you want. Um, yes. If you are treated poorly, uh, the design just doesn't matter. So it's really about service. And of yeah. course, I miss hotels. Remember hotels? There used to be hotels. I yeah. know. I know. I know. And I think it's so incredible, the service. The service. If somebody has is in a wheelchair or somebody, whatever it is, can go to one of the hotels and be very comfortable and, and not feel excluded or isolated in any way. And I think justice and advocate for disability is is so important because it covers so much and also let me just say one more thing before we let peter talk and i introduce him really he is a gorgeous writer and award-winning journalist and he writes for forbes he writes for Barron. He is the founder of Grid Magazine, which has to do with design and architecture, doesn't it, Peter? With yes, well, it's, yeah. it's no longer in publication, but I did create it. You uh, did create it. So it's the whole, it, it's the whole, ooh, I could go on and on and on. I could put on my half broken glasses and read <laughs> more. Um, visually blind, he is a director of Emperor Empire State Employment Resources for the Blind and the Colorado Center for the Blind and many other things. Excuse that phone ringing. I feel I forgot to click off the thing. It'll go off in a second. That's all right. Now we know how important you are. I'm 800. That's right. Soliciting. I'm sorry. Um, I'm just going to introduce Peter 
Slayton. And I want to ask you a question. Okay. And then I'm going to hold up this document <laughs> called the Slayton Report. And if the date on it is, I'm looking, is, is it 05, I'm, Peter? It is 05. It's 15 yes, it years is ago, 05. Which is kind of shocking. It's rather shocking. And what I want to ask today is, has I, I refuse to call Trump President Trump because sure. I don't feel he's fit to be a president, nor does he act like a president, nor has he <laughs> helped anybody. In fact, he seems to to cut everything for disability, the mentally ill, African American. He's a racist. Um, I don't even believe he cares about the, the Jews and being a Jewish woman. I'm not really impressed by. No, oh, he does oh. not like. He does not like the Jews. No, and I don't even. You know that signing thing with his his pale, innocent kind of moronic son-in-law. The whole thing <laughs> with his signing. You know, yes, yeah. like for peace in the world, but has has. But there was. Excuse me. There was no war that he made he didn't make peace with anyone who was at war you know that's that, a, exactly you know, how has this a, administration peter affected you negatively i mean your work negatively in any way how has it affected you before i show this document which i'm well, just savoring to hold up barbara it's um i don't know where to begin except it affected me from from the night he he won the election and mm -hmm. really I felt the cold you know fall on all of us and I felt like we are going to be in for a ride that's going to feel like a joke at first and it's going to get more and more serious as he believes as he has come to believe more and more in his own abilities he's fooled himself. I think, and to me, I think that's possibly where where the fall will come because he believes so much in himself uh, because he's seen how he can convince so many other people to believe in him. Uh, but of course, he is not not credible. Uh, so I, I think that's the the weakest link is in his own absolute faith in himself. But I also think that somewhere he knows he's pulling a con. And, and that's where, you know, that I said this, it's a weak link, but it's also behind that. If, as long as he's aware that he's pulling a con, um, we are at a disadvantage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just amazing, even with the Bob Woodward tapes, where mm. he says it all on the tapes that the people, his base, I should say, they still, they still will excuse him. Yes, they will. So what you're talking about is this kind of power. It's not intelligence. It's, it's no, power. it's a, you know, uh, my my wife calls me an idiot savant for certain things. I can do with remembering <laughs> dates and times, and very funny and uh, and lighthearted uh, but he is just like a, a child prodigy in front of a piano he's a yes. yes people at reading he's a, a human dousing rod of weakness and foibles and desires and it's it's an amazing talent but that's all it is it's a it's a showman's talent, but he's ridden it so far because he's been in the right, the right time and done the right things with it. Um, and yet, even though people know all about it, they just don't care if they want to like it. And, and this is what he's really done is, um, is what's, he, he's tapped into what's been growing in America um, for decades, so it really, took root when Obama won and went out of his way to show the right that he was a man for everyone, a person for everyone, 
and um, he had that awful evangelical at his inauguration. Yes. Uh, and I thought, oh, why are you doing that? But, and then, you know, Mitch, Mitch, that guy, Mitch, we won't say. Oh. <laughs> you no, know, he, he took to his group and he said, we're going to make him, we're going to, we cannot let this, he yeah. use the N-word, but that's what he was basically doing. And the queue took off from there, and it's been growing in this country ever since. And uh, and Trump really made it. Um, what's um, it's made his it plain and gave us all permission to hate whoever we wanted to hate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, and, and, you know, it's just like with Hitler. Um, everyone knew that. Um, the Jews were being thrown into the concentration camps. Babies were being taken out of the parents' arms and thrown into pits. Right. And everyone knew all this was going on. But, but, even, but even Jews didn't know. There were plenty of Jews who still said, we'll be okay. I know. That's what I, this is what what I'm contrasting this to, is this really happening now? Is, are, are we going to lose our, our voices? Or, or let me just go back and say the work you're doing for justice for disabilities, that's just, a, that's such a big thing because well, let's, we let's look at Let's look at what, what he said, um, what he's purported, reported to have said um, about uh, amputee veterans in parades and how. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> look at that. Now. Oh, that's right. Here's where he is basically, uh, wait, there's a siren outside your window instead of outside mine? How about that? Mine, it's San Francisco. <laughs> siren. Um, but basically he, he is voicing what so many people think and many people don't want to think, but they think it anyway. And, but he doesn't care that they don't want, you know, he's voicing the world's horror and fear, terror of disability and how it reminds us of our own vulnerability and um, inevitability of death and, 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 uh, and what happens to us when we're dead, after we're dead and how, you know, death and dust. You know, and so he sees that and he can't abide it. And he feels he's the filter that, the, the lack of a filter that keeps him from saying, that, that keeps him from, that keeps him talking, I'm trying to say. The lack of a filter yeah, okay. is, is evident in, in, it's just the same lack of filter that comes to the fore when, when he's talking about disability. It's how he talks about women. It's, um, but Peter, isn't it true that there are so many of us with disabilities, some of them are, we don't even see what they are. Ooh, it's invisible dis disabilities, sure. Right. And of course. How, do, how do we accept him from not liking us? So for example, my son is high functioning autistic, so is my husband. And when Trump made fun of autism and said, it wasn't a real thing. You know, it's but like, but I live with it. I live with it 24-7. Yeah. It is a real thing. And I'm not the only person who lives with it. Well, of course, you know, here's where your power comes in, in our power, which is to just, you know, just take that and put it away. Because he said that, and your power is in talking to anyone who questions that who's, whether it's on your podcast or someone you meet on the street, um, you know the truth of it. So um, it's what, you know, it's, again, it's easy for me to say this. So, you know, I haven't been in this direct line, but, um, well, yeah, maybe I have. Uh, uh, when people say they're afraid of being fired, they're afraid of, they don't speak out because they're afraid of what will happen. I think, well, what's going to happen? What? really is going to happen. I mean, what are you so afraid of? You know, there is, um, there was a day when I reported a story in the New York Post 
this was probably in 1996 or seven, probably in 97, around then anyway. The next morning the phone rang and I answered the phone and I heard the words, hold for Mr. Trump. And then I heard Peter, you know, you're a piece of shit. Just went on and on and on. You don't know what you're talking about. Blah, 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 blah. You know, I was supposed to be, oh, what am I supposed to do with that? And then I will tell you, so he said all those things. And at other times he would see me in a room with other reporters, other real estate reporters. And he would say, there's Peter Slayton, the best real estate reporter in New York. So how do you square that circle? You don't, don't even try. He doesn't mean either one. Doesn't, it doesn't, he doesn't make, mean either one. That's a, he wants one. one thing to perform. I mean, he, he's, yes. He means the, the nasty stuff first yeah. because he hates when anyone says anything that, that belittles him or puts him in a bad light. But he even really doesn't care about that because it's much better than not being noticed. The, you know, the, the famous, I don't even know who first said it, the only thing worse than being talked about is not being talked about. And he's taking that. But Peter, the thing that I have to read, I just cannot believe this, a Slayton report. This beautifully written, honest article that Peter wrote about well, the buildings that Trump was was. Well, can, can I set that up for a minute, Barbara? Please set it up for me, yes. So the quick, the quick thing is, Barbara mentioned Grid. Grid was a magazine. It closed. I launched a website called theslaytonreport.com. It closed, too. Um, what can I say? I'm a loser. Um, no, no, you aren't. <laughs> I, I, no. And I, I wrote an article about um, Trump's uh, sale of what was uh, then called, it was, it was a huge chunk of land on New York's west side. It's known as Riverside South. He built a bunch of buildings. He had first proposed back in the 80s, he proposed to build something called Trump City on this site. Um, stretches from 59th to 72nd Street um, uh, on the, along the Hudson River. And he had a 150 tall, foot tall tower. Then it was gonna be TV city. He couldn't get permit, permits for all this. And besides the land was actually owned by a Hong Kong um, conglomerate, Hong Kong, Hong Kong conglomerate. So he of course always pretended it was his. And so when he sold it, I pointed out that he didn't, that he was a minority owner. And then I also talked about how right. taken this incredible opportunity to build beautiful buildings on the Hudson River and built some of the ugliest buildings in New York. So I, I love the line that Peter says, you know, how he, uh, how he didn't give, um, well, he had a small, a small, relatively small minority stake in it. And then Trump writes, it's 50% small. And then, and then it was Peter actually 30%. Writes, it was actually 30%. But he, he, I'm sure that he had to amplify. And then Peter, I love this line. And he said, he simply refuses to give grace to a place that was a shamble. And you know, it's true. And then he writes, Trump writes in his classic writing, Peter, you are a real loser, exclamation point. Thanks for the nice story and good luck, Donald J. Trump. I mean, he's still <laughs> saying the same thing about everybody. Right. Everybody. Crazy Nancy Pelosi, Sleepy Joe. He made fun right. of Joe Biden last night for wearing a mask. He said, a hundred feet away, he wears a mask and then a dangle. And the audience is going crazy because- well, This is this is the really awful thing because he's now killing people. Yeah, he's killing, now it's murder. And, and it's murder and it's not funny and it's not a cute parlor trick like it was in real estate. If you're somehow convincing one millionaire to give you money, convincing Deutsche Bank, yeah, money, the laundered money, whatever. That's one thing. But when you're killing people, um, that's really something else. And you saw last night someone asked him, what about the 200,000? And he just said, who's next? 
Who's next, right. But and who's yeah, got another question? Why are these people going by the thousands to his rally the other night, standing close to each other, no masks, and we know, as Dr. Redfield said, we know that many of those people are going to end up sick and may, might die from this virus. Well, which this is, this is again. sadly, I think, beyond Trump. It's the, um, and Trump is, uh, he's the creature of, of the weird media world we live in that we couldn't imagine um, mm -hmm. when we were coming up. Uh, and right-wing media, um, crazy conspiracy yeah. theories, and Rush Limbo getting the what was it, the Peace Prize or whatever. <laughs> yeah. well, you know, our question here in Ohio, Governor DeWine took the right path in the Did. beginning, and now with the yes. Trump rallies, he has said even though we are required to wear a mask in Ohio. You don't have to wear it at a Trump rally. Oh, he's coming out now and saying yes, that? and it upsets yes. completely because I know there are good Republicans out there. And in the beginning stages, I was. I'll, I'll give you. I'll give. I'll give you that. They're voting for Biden. Some of them. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. But how Dewine could do this in my state where I pay taxes and now I'm getting more afraid to go out because even right. though when I wrote to DeWine and I said, how could you do this? He said, well, that was in Zanesville. You live near Cleveland. Uh, that doesn't mean people from Cleveland didn't go to Zanesville for the rally and the virus is going to spread. So, and we all know the virus is in, I mean, rural communities in North Dakota. Come on. Uh, in Europe, it's it's spiking. Well, you know, it, it, it's it's. I, I do equate it to Germany during the Holocaust and the Jews. It's the same thing. It's the same thing that's happening. People aren't. They're not really listening. They don't care. They're just listening well, to. Well, it's the it. it's the power of the mob and feeling. You know, when they get next to each other in these rallies and they feel camaraderie they feel you know they're they're justified they're justifying each other and supporting each other as they buy into the fantasy um, and for that moment they they feel so powerful and that's i think that's that's true, true. Uh, i think that's true that, yes they want the gaudy trump tower too and yes. they, they, they do feel powerful. But you know, Peter, too, what really strikes me is how Trump is also constantly, constantly talking now. It's, the virus only gets old people, the elders. The oh, my old God. People. Now it's the age is coming in, you know, the old people, which, of course, we know isn't true. And so now, now the the elderly, which he means, I guess, from sixty plus. No, I think he means for elderly. It's got to be anyone older than he is. Uh, <laughs> right, right, right. But no, 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 no. It does mean sixty plus. It means. Mm -hmm. I think um, you're right. Yeah. But you know, there was a, an article in the Atlantic yesterday um, talking about a uh, a study. I forget what it's called, but it was a. I see it as a kind of a fake experiment uh, where if you if you are driving, say, a, a truck and you have to swerve and you can swerve to one direction and kill some young people or swerve to the other direction to kill some old people, which way will you go, you know? And most people said they'll go kill the old people. And, you know, it's just such a false, a false, uh, it's, 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 of a false, it's unbelievable because he really hates everyone and he makes fun of everybody. Yes, um, he's, he's such a racist. He has not mentioned George Floyd yet. He has not mentioned. No. Um, he won't. That's not anyone. important to him. I mean, anyone. He doesn't mention anyone. He praises the police. The veterans are losers. Uh, he makes fun. Except for the veterans he loves. You know, he, veterans are losers, but he, of course loves them. But we saw the very first day 
of his presidency when he basically, you know, went and told off the CIA and, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. see, this is the other thing. We need to stop feeling, paying attention. Basically, we need to I stop know. Paying I know. Him, oh my God, he said something else shocking. Oh my God, he said something else shocking. Oh my God, he did something else. Yes, he's going to keep doing it and he will keep doing it. We have to say, okay, well, that's how you want to do it. Do it. We, we have to find another way. Another way, except what worries me is during the debates, how can, I, I'm worried he's going to say all those terrible things. The latest he is saying is that Biden is a pedophile. He can't <laughs> just go out and say those things during but a he can. president. But he but can he and he will. Right. And he will say something. He'll say whatever he, whatever he has to say to keep himself, to keep his base you know, energized, but it's not just the base as we've seen now. It's like now the uh, the Senate that was really at odds with itself, the Republican Senate, they see, you know, we can just drop all the pretense because we can now just scuttle abortion. We can, and it's not about abortion, it's about women's health and rights, reproductive rights. We can scuttle that. We can scuttle health care for anyone who's not making really good money. We can scuttle voting rights for people of color, and we can scuttle marriage rights for gay people, LGBT people. We can just do all that, and we have the cover of this man. And Mitt Romney says, well, you have to get over being, you know, having had a liberal bias on the court. Okay. I can't stand Mitt. I, I have to say, I never Thank liked you. him. He's Rant he's away. He's <laughs> Faced, he's two faced. What really yes. got me is when he gave that big speech for his grandchildren against Trump. And then, as soon as Trump becomes president, he's in a limousine meeting Trump yep. for dinner. And, you know, Trump had no, he was, Trump outsmarted him there because he was never going oh, to. Yeah, well, because he's, it's not that deep, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean it. It it's 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 a reality show at this point, and sa and a sad reality show. And like I say, because of the virus as well, how how is Slayton Group or how how is the training still going on by Zoom? In truth, in in truth, Barbara, right now it's not. Um, it I'm reaching out into, I'm, I'm starting to look at the corporate world. I want to get into the corporate world because that's where the adoption will take place with companies that have been looking at their own corporate social responsibility, mostly with regard to sustainability and then with diversity and inclusion. And mm -hmm. that has not included people with disabilities, but it's beginning to shift. And I'll tell you that just the awareness and reception I get when I bring this up uh, is different today than it was three years ago or in, and five years ago when it was really, the reaction was really kind of opaque and uh, turning away. And now there's understanding that it's, it's out there, that it's real and it will involve everyone. And so there, there's now that the, the conversation is more toward how do I do this? Yes, we want to, we want to do the right thing, but it's still so hard because it is, there's so much misunderstanding, so much ignorance. Um, I'm working on a project right now with an organization, a trade organization. Um, and uh, they brought me in after I told them that their website wasn't accessible to me. And instead of saying, well, that's too bad, son. They said, how can we fix it? And oh, that's it. and then they reached out to bring me in to do something else uh, that they're working on. And I'm so pleased with that. That's the right approach. Now I approach them and I, uh, and I, as a, I didn't approach them saying, I'm going to sue your ass. Mm -hmm. I said, you have a problem and um, I know who you are and I admire your organization. So, can we work together to fix this? Um, on the other hand, I've approached other organizations and they, and, and I've heard the message, well, 
we want to do this, but our leadership just isn't interested in mm -hmm. accessibility. Um, and that takes time, that takes time. But at some point, organizations, you know, uh, groups like uh, the National Federation of the Blind, which I'm a proud member of, uh, says enough of this and, and they take the hard stance and then they get crap for being um, confrontational. But at some point, if, if there's no result, you have to be confrontational. So, uh, uh, so to answer your question, I'm looking for entry points into corporate life, uh, into um, sports and rec, into where, wherever there is service, there are service workers or wherever there is a community that wants help integrating people with disabilities into their, into their community and doesn't know where to start. That's, that's where I want to go. Oh God, it's we relabel disability with different abilities? No, I, that's, no? that's, you know, I think that's, um, you know, I, actually a friend of mine gave a whole talk on language the other day and, and his comment on the phrase differently abled is, that's just a way of not to say, trying to avoid the word disabled. Okay. You know, and so differently abled, handicapped, um, these are just, they're ways of avoiding disability, but what's wrong with disability? You know, I have disability. Right. I'm proud to have it. I'm proud to learn to live with it. I'm not ashamed of it, but it doesn't come easily. It's, you know, and I know people who, young people, old people, you know, and I think it's really hard for older people who are coming into disability and don't think of themselves as having a disability and maybe they shouldn't think of themselves but they as that but they're learning to live with changed circumstances changed abilities um, diminished abilities to see or hear or think or mm -hmm. walk um, have sex whatever everything uh, living yes so, well, thank so, you for that explanation Oh, yeah, I love that. So, Peter, I want to ask you a question. Please. This sounds kind of pedestrian because I'm listening with awe of everything. This will sound naive, maybe, but I see a world, I hope for a world generation, and do you, where everyone with disabilities, not disabilities, um, we'll work together. For example, we're all Zooming now. I, yes. I, I have to learn technology as an 84-year-old woman. I have to you seem to be doing just fine, Barbara. Well, I'm learning. Why can't this be for those who are disabled, or it probably is, I know, but what I'm saying, it will be a big world, where, a corporate world, where corporations will have the necessary equipment or however you place it where okay. everyone can work together it's coming you know this if the pandemic has one you know i hate to, it sounds so dumb a, a positive out of the pandemic it's killed no it's bad. So, it's true. so let's let me not put it that way but people are learning and it has become obvious that people with disabilities who were told, well, we can't hire you because you can't come to work with us mm -hmm. in our offices or whatever, it's become obvious that uh, they can do everything that they can do, that you can do, what we can do, we all can do it. And so the technology is an equalizer. But even then, when the technology has that potential, attention has to be paid to how it's built and designed so that it is an equalizer. Right, right. And is that happening? Are there more? Um... It's happening, but it's shocking how, how just how little is still known about it. And now, you know, no one is going to build a public building now uh, that doesn't, that, that you need stairs to get into. It's just not going to happen. Um, but people will still build websites that have you know technological stairs, mm -hmm. um, and because they're just not even aware of it, and 
the law has been clarified, but it's still, um, there's still, it's, it's still a long slog. But I think it's going to happen. I think it, it has, it's called humanity. Yeah, yes. You know, and, and it's got to happen. It's got to happen because I'm sitting here with my big old beautiful Mac desktop top that someone gave me actually. And oh, I'm nice. thinking, okay, it's lovely. I'm thinking it's opened up a whole new world for me with with the zooming and the learning so so for example um um why couldn't they have well for anybody who can't move their hands say right. um, i think i think of the the great stephen hawking sure. you know that's one thing or someone who who has to have the keys in braille they well, could be zooming there are braille typewriters there are braille um, no. Are, there are actually braille, um, you can, there's something called refreshable braille displays, which is an electronic form of braille. So I could be, if I were a fluent braille reader, I could do all this on a braille typewriter, um, mm -hmm. an electronic one. Um, and they're wonderful machines. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, it, it, it's all there. It's all possible. Um, it just has to be built and people have to be hooked into it, you know, and made aware of it. And of course, they're, they're, there is um, software and programming that enables someone who cannot use their hands uh, to, yeah. to use a computer, to speak, you know, have a computer speak for them and write for them and, um, and surf the web. Uh, so we can all do that. And uh, it's an amazing thing, but it takes time. Just as, you know, what's happening now in the world, what we're seeing all this very dark time, um, it's, you know, yes, the arc of the arc of, uh, of the world bends, arc of history bends toward justice. Well, right now it's taking a little detour, um, mm -hmm. but it's uh, anyone who thinks that it's not going to return to its, uh, to this path, the path of, of justice and the path of equality an equal opportunity is so sadly mistaken and they can there would be so many people injured and hurt and ruined along the way so that people can grab just a little share of power or some some meaningless piece of power meaningless, yes. really so so awful because you know what happens when people get paid more they buy more they can do more what could be what could be better than giving people the ability to work and live in in reasonable conditions rather than starving them you know why do shareholders need those dividends more than the people who who do the work that build the company you know, how can we when is that going to just be so clear it's clear as day and yet I think that's what, what is theirs. Is about. I, I, I'm interpreting it as you're building pathways, pathways right. for connections, and those pathways and connections will be like, like you see freeways that will be different ways to go to the same place. And I think mm -hmm. that. I really think we're going to have a world. I may not be here for that, but the thing is you're working that's on right. it. You're working on it. And and that's why I I think it's it's so important because for example, I just want to say one thing. You know I said this once before Peter and it's very general, but I think that age is treated as a disability as well. Yes. And I'm glad you agree. I talked to a 41 year old yesterday and she actually said that she's, she's just having a major depression turning 40 because of the way she's being treated. And isn't my best bad? friends are 41 really. Um, yeah, exactly. Um, I still remember when my mother turned 41. Uh huh. She said uh, uh, she said something about uh, 
This means I have one foot in the grave. <laughs> yeah, I remember <laughs> like, that. And she did not, you know, she, she did not, she meant it like, you know, I'm grown up now. I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and it's all changing. Uh, of course, this, this I'm hoping will be another show about ageism and ableism. I would love to do that again. Well, that I would love to do. Yes, that I would love to do. Karen, are we on for another show? We, we will have Peter on any time. I have, anytime. I have to tell you, Peter, that before we did the show today, um, as I prefaced, I've been walking around with this anger and angst mm. because of everything that I hear Donald Trump say. But you sort of put it in perspective for me. He's going to say it whether I get angry or not. That's right. So why am I making myself sick being That's angry? right. I need to get my voice out there, believe in what I have to say, and just keep going forward. That's because right. he knows, yes, exactly, Karen, because he's, that's how he gets his power. It's like a, a grim fairy tale or some, it's some, it's just so bizarre. It is. So to, this is his, his only true genius. Yes. Mm -hmm. Stable, and he's not a genius, but he has this ability that he has honed and he's lived long enough and done it long enough, you know. Yeah. I remember reporting on on buildings that he was involved in, and I talked to uh, some of the brokers, and they said, "Oh my God, he he comes down to the site, and he knows the workers' names. He's you know encourages them all." And this was back in the '90s, you know, um, you know, and and this was after you know all those Polish workers he brought over to to do the stonework at the, yes. at the Trump, you know, destroy Bonwit Teller. After he cheated them, they didn't pay. They had to sue him to get the money. Money, you know, it took them yeah. 11 years to get paid. So this is the same man can do one and the other at the same time, and not worry about either one, not worry about either one. So, um, so if you give him um, agency, we cannot give him agency, um, even though he has it in his in his you know it's his power his president he has yeah. that but we don't have to give it to we don't have to give him any more right we don't have to buy the ticket to see his right. show yep. right. you know and essentially well you know his his health insurance policy which is a joke that he is going to be presenting in the next couple of weeks i wonder how this he is, is going not to, he doesn't have is this going to hurt say disabled people it's going to hurt everybody else oh wait, wait a second you're confusing me you're confusing me do you actually think he has i don't really think he has one no. he you know so I, I i think he's not going to show us anything he's been promising for years and any disabled then um um obamacare if he doesn't have something to replace it no he doesn't and and that's just fine with him, you know, and unfortunately, it will probably have to come to something like that. Um, you know, the end of Obamacare, the end of abortion rights, the end of voting rights, all these things being stripped away. Yeah. And somebody will be mad. And, um, yes, I'm worried about the announcement this coming Saturday, you know, so quickly. Oh, yeah. Well, that's clear. You know, we'll they, back hundreds of years. But I'll say I'll say this: my favorite statistic that I heard um, in the last week or so, and you I'm sure you know this, that uh, is that eighty percent of the people over sixty-five in America are white, and fifty percent of the people under eighteen are people of color. So that's yes. okay. Yes. But the the key now is as finally people are starting to talk about this minority rule. And that's what that's what the Republicans seem to be driving toward because they know it, and they're you know making no bones about it. So we are all living in this middle of this dark history, and like I pour over books about Henry VIII. I'm so interested. 
you know, people will pour over this part of history we're living in. But yes, they will. They will. What but the I, hell was wrong with these people? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but it's going to lead like the work Peter is doing. It's going to lead into much bigger and more connected horizons because we're all people. We're, it's, yep. we're just people. So it has to not be so divided into these little cubbies. Oh, we that's can, the that's the end game. It's like at some point, yeah. You, know, you look at the earth, and borders are borders and boundaries are made up. You know, all things that we created to to make lives easier and harder, easier for us, harder for others. Um, that's what money is too. You know, it's that's a whole another subject I'd love to hear more about. You know, I want to ask Peter one question now, because he's in New York, and I'm fascinated with this. Is it true that New York, like San Francisco, is emptying out? Um, it has, it did empty out over the summer. Um, I live in an apartment building with a co-op with 100 units or so, and at least 40% of our building was empty over has been empty people are starting to repopulate to some degree but mm -hmm. i saw a study recently that said only about 10 percent of midtown offices are occupied um so it's still really you know it's vulnerable a right? long way to go yeah san francisco too i live in a building I told you, Peter, in Pacific Heights on Broadway. Yes. Old building. I feel like I'm alone here. Everyone's gone. <laughs> I mean, it's half. It's it's half filled. Um, Polk Street, um, Karen. These are like little main streets near me in Broadway. They're they're boarded up. You know, restaurants with boards on them. And we don't have restaurants with boards because we we have. Um, well, there are restaurants that just are closed up. There are definitely restaurants that are out of business. The partitions outside. Yes, they have partitions. Yes. Uh -huh. that, and, you know, the, the outdoor dining is really fun, actually, but it's still, you got to be careful. And you have to be careful. Uh, we have to all be careful. Yes. And what I want to say is, I, I wish this could go on forever, but for all the listeners out there, Listen to Peter's, listen to this podcast and the other one that we have that people are listening to every day and Google Peter too and, and read his, his articles, everything. But I want to say, Karen and Peter, stay safe. I need you both. The world needs you both. Stay safe. Listeners. We need you. <laughs> so. Thank you. Thank and you, Barbara. And thank you, Karen. Oh, you're oh, very And welcome. Peter, I want to know, so where can the listeners reach you, Peter? They can reach me at uh, peter at slatingroup.com. That's mm -hmm. S-L-A-T-I-N. Okay. S-L-A-T-I-N. Peter at slatingroup.com. They can go to slatingroup.com and just learn more. Um, but I'd love to hear from everybody and uh they can also if you if they know you they can reach out to you and you can send them yeah. my way but um i'd love, yeah. love to hear from them good and they can go to youtube listeners you can go to youtube and if you want to reach me it's barbara rose brooker b-r-o-k-e-r dot com my website you can find me there and please go to agemarch.org yes uh, the first virtual age march is going to be in 2021 it's in production now with two hollywood producers and revitalash is sponsoring it so we're very and funding it we're very excited about that's it that's very exciting barbara yes. i think it's, it's a movement and it's for everybody listen we're all aging every minute we're yeah. no one's an expert we're all in the same boat so you got it <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so That's for sure. I send all my love. 
to uh, listeners back. Like you. <laughs> One you. of these days, I'll see you in San Francisco. Yes. Oh, sounds wonderful. Is it? We're going to have a reunion. We already yeah. talked about that. Well, Barbara, thank you again for this wonderful opportunity. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. It. Thank you, Peter. And we will talk. I'll so. be pestering you for the next one. <laughs> okay. Pester away and happy bye. new year. Stay bye, safe. Bye, Peter. And bye, Karen. Bye, Barbara. Bye.